Drawing Lewis diagrams for covalent compounds. In this video, we'll examine a few examples of how to draw Lewis diagrams for covalent compounds. We'll start with PF3, phosphorus trifluoride. The first step is to count up the total number of valence electrons available between all of the atoms. We know that phosphorus has five valence electrons and fluorine each fluorine atom has seven valence electrons. Since there are three of them, we multiply by that by three and we get 21. Add that to the original five and we have 26 electrons to work with. Draw the symbols for the atoms and start distributing electrons. You might need to backtrack with some of these. Let's start by giving phosphorus eight valence electrons to make it happy. That leaves us, if we subtract 8 from the original 26, that leaves us with 18 to share between the three fluorine atoms. 18 divided by 3 gives us 6. So let's see what happens if we put 6 around each one of these atoms. We see that each one of the atoms feels like it has eight electrons. And a simpler way to draw this is using straight lines for each single bond that forms. The correct Lewis diagram and line draw it diagram for phosphorus trifluoride. Let's try another one. Silicon tetrachloride. In this case, we know that silicon has four valence electrons and each chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. But since there are four chlorine atoms, that gives us 28. 28 plus the original four gives us 32 electrons to work with. Let's start by drawing the atoms in. And we'll give silicon eight valence electrons. 32 minus eight is 24. We now have 24 electrons left to distribute between the chlorine atoms. So 24 divided by four leaves six. Let's see if that works. So in this scenario, the silicon feels like it has eight. Chlorine feels like it has eight. Each of the chlorines feel like they have eight. And we've drawn this one correctly as well. Here's the simpler way to draw it. One more, and this one's a challenger. Carbon dioxide. Let's start with the number of valence electrons. We know that carbon has four and oxygen has six. But since there are two oxygen atoms, that gives us 12 valence electrons plus the four from carbon. That gives us 16 in total. Let's start by drawing the atoms. And for sure we know that carbon and oxygen have at least one bonding pair between them. So we'll take away four there, that leaves us with 12. We have 12 atoms left to work with, with the oxygens. So if we give each one of them six, let's see what happens with that. Well, each of the oxygens now believes that it has eight electrons. But carbon is left a little bit high and dry and only has four electrons. So clearly this isn't correct and something else needs to be done. We leave these electrons as they are, but we might have to move around some other ones. So 
we still have the bonding pairs between the carbon and the oxygen, and we still have some lone pairs. But we're going to take this pair of electrons and shift it over here so that we end up having another pair of electrons there. We'll take this pair of electrons here and shift it here so that we have another pair of electrons here. What this does now is still keeps the oxygen condent in that it believes that it has eight electrons, as does this one. And now the carbon also believes it has eight electrons. What we've created here is a double bond between the carbon and each of the oxygens. And this is the correct configuration. The top one showed only one double bond and it wasn't even really accurate because the carbon didn't have enough electrons around it. So this is the correct configuration for carbon dioxide.